Yeah, and we are live and we are back again. Welcome, our viewers, our friends, our followers, everyone. Hi, Mike. Good to see you again, man. How are you doing? Hey, what's what's up, man? Good to be here. <laughs> I think we're we're number what twenty. Twenty. Yes, man. Twenty. <laughs> That's a lot. Today, Mike's on my left side. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> we change sides. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah. And how how was your week? Yeah, I, I, the, the week's been good. I, I've been quite inspired about what happened to me. I, I have had a little bit of inspiration, some design inspiration this week. And I've been sketching up some drawings. And it's been a while since I've been sketching up some drawings. And it's really kind of opened up my creativeness again. And I really feel like a project is going to be here. I mean, I've got, I've got a lot of unfinished projects, but I think there's going to be a complete project uh, by the end of the summer. So, anyways, I, I've been inspired. This, and you guys, I'll I'll tell you more about it when I when it fruits a little bit more. But, anyways, what about what about bringing uh, some live updates with image vid videos? Are you up to share it? Well, I mean, may maybe maybe eventually, but I mean, uh, for right now, it's just something that I'm working. No, I mean, on when you start building it. Oh yeah. All right. I I think so. I think uh, we could definitely uh consider and there's there's actually a podcast uh trike i've been developing so i think that's the most relevant thing here is that i've been starting to think about a podcast trike so anyways we can, nice I'll, I'll definitely progress on that one <laughs> cool cool i'm sure people would love to see you working like building a bike on your trailer studio pub <laughs> Whatever we can call that. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. And tonight's going to be hot. It's really hot. In Warsaw, it's hot. In Spain, it's hot. And I'm sure in, in our pub, it's going to be even hotter because the guest is is hot, man. It's really hot. That's I got right, a lot man. of stories to that's tell about right. me. Can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Uh, before we move on, uh, another thing I, I would like to talk about is very soon we are starting a kind of partnership with uh, Rico from Ganov Bikes, and we're going to get something new, maybe I'll give it away, maybe some, I don't know, Rafa, we, we are studying what to do, but we saw some really cool stuff on Ganov Bikes, and probably it's going, to, it's going to happen, and very soon. We cannot talk much right now, but it's going to happen, right? That's right, yeah, and Ganovi, really, man, he, he's, he's the guy, man, and he's the guy here in Europe making some special bits, so you know, we're, we're looking forward to your stuff, uh, Rico. Exactly. All right. And so we can bring our feature. What do you think? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So let's let's get right into our first feature. I mean, he's he's this is um, a feature I've been wanting to talk about for a while because these guys have been in the game for quite a while and they, they've been supplying um custom bikes to the custom bike community for quite a few years and they've got like u.s representatives uh selling out there so you i'm sure you guys have seen some of these bikes they've they've also been associated with some of the uh famous people rap star you know whatever and i've seen these bikes like uh, customized to to the core and these guys um tsp cycle farm are based in italy and mm -hmm. they've been doing this yeah it, You've 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 seen their uh, well. I, anyways, I I just see uh, that that's the one I wanted to mention. I think this one is called the Wave, right? And I think this one really? is like the the newest one, right? And and you could see the form on these uh, particular bikes are really really stylish from Italy. I mean, you can order these up, and they have in the quality control of these bikes. Are amazing the qualities you ask anybody who's got a TSP you know they these guys don't mess around and uh, they've got it down um, yeah, yeah I, I'm ahead. sure a lot of our viewers got these frames these bikes so if they can share a selfie on this bike right now we will be very happy oh yeah <laughs> that's right you guys if you guys any of you guys got your TSP and you got a selfie with it or you got a gonna show it here it, show, show it to us man because you know, these guys have been around for a while. They've sold, you know, they're they're more like a, a factory. Um, and they, they've, they you know, they had higher than uh, normal kind of custom productions. 
but they're still limited. They, they're not in the thousands or anything. I, I think maybe in the hundreds and stuff like that. And so, and it's a small shop and they, they've, they don't have, you know, a, a lot of employees. So they, it is a, a kind of, um, and I believe Luca, who's the founder of this, um, of this, uh, company, He's also a custom uh, custom motorcycle builder. So he's more a custom motorcycle builder and got into building bicycles. So you can see where he's kind of, you know, they've used the professionalism of custom bike, a custom motorcycle building into the custom bike. So you can see that. Yeah. And they, yeah they, I've seen some electric. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If I'm not wrong as well. That's right. Yeah. It's. I think that's the oldster, yeah, and that became very popular. Um, I think that they're they're oldster and their waves, uh, and then that new wave. I think uh, you just showed up are their most popular models. I think they have a female frame too. I've seen some, but you I can see, see how gorgeous the finishes come too, straight from the from their factory. You know, I mean the it's finishes so on these things. Yeah, yeah, and the customizers. Yeah, I mean these are some. And people are, are taking their frames and I believe they do sell just their frames. You know, they don't have to uh, sell the whole bike, but I'm, I'm not sure about that. You know, we have That's a lot of friends here tonight, 32 people watching us. Oh, Let me fantastic. just give a, a, yeah, a shoot out for those. I can, okay. I will say one name. What's you say up, the man? second name. Okay. <laughs> we have Thomas. What's up, Thomas? Hey, family. There. Hey, what's up, Rico? Luke. <laughs> hey, what's up, Luke? Hey, man. G27. Hey, G, hey, G27. What's up, dude? Yeah, yeah. Hey, our friend. Florian. Hey, Florian. Hey, what's up? Good to see you, man. Hey, Chris. Oh, buddy. Let's go. Hey, guitar hey. give it away. Oh, this is a new friend. Yeah. Hey, Ferry. Ferry. What's up, Ferry? Yeah, Guido. Yeah, Guido. Guido. There. Oh, cool. Hey, Micha. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. I'm glad Renko. you guys are in. Remco. Always with us here. Oh, of course. Always. Yeah, cool, man. Tommy. Yeah, all right, man. Good red, red brown from from uh, Spain, yes. Yeah, Tommy. from Spain as well. Yeah, Tommy yeah, from Brazil. Right. Always yeah, here right, with us. from Brazil. Yeah. Rico, once again, I think he is not coming very often anymore because he just got married, so something's going oh, to oh, change. Oh, that's right, Rico. You just got married. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Congratulations, <laughs> man. Congratulations, <laughs> Michael. Hey, what's up, Michael? I'm glad you guys are all tuning See in. You. From Germany, yes. there we go. Uh, Ferries from Holland, yes. Ed. Ed from Holland as well. Oh, In yeah. The, oh, yeah. The, from uh, Spain, España. Champion. Hey, get pasa, tío. Hey, en, en hora buena. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. 32 people watching us. So, uh, sorry. Oh, Zahir, if we forgot some hey, names. Hey, what's up, Z, man? What's Z. up, Z? Good to see South Africa. Yes. Hey, yeah, man, we are. All yeah, over the world, people from yeah, everywhere. Yeah, I think we're touching every uh, every corner there. <laughs> All right, man. Oh, so Rico is saying that he got married ten years ago. He just updated his profile. <laughs> That's a good, <laughs> a good trick. All man. right, good, trick. Oh, good. We were hoping <laughs> that we weren't stepping on your wedding night right now. You know, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not losing a viewer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go back for. Our, TSP bikes. Cool. Yeah. So, like, so yes. I, I I reached out to to Luca, who's who's, uh, and you know, I mean, the production's been slowing down quite a bit, and there were some rumors that they were going out of business, and I reached out to Luca to to confirm if this was still going, and he reaffirmed to me that there's they're not going out of business. They're they're still continuing to build bikes. So you guys hang in there. They said they're changing shops, you know, so it's all in the works, you know, pandemic, all that kind of, who knows where we're all at when we come out of, out of this. Right. So anyways, look at these killer ass frames. They sell these, they, they build it like a, a woman's frame there too. I mean, that's, that's the oldster frame. That's a beautiful one. The oldster. I've seen these, I rode these in person myself. I loved them, man. They, they really is... roll really good. Ferry oh, yeah. Car just sent this picture. It's his bike. Oh, Ferry, that's yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Beautiful. Oh, yeah. I... Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's his bike. 
Perry, you got everything. <laughs> yeah, he's in um, everything. Wow, we can make a, a show. We can make a show only with ferry bikes. Definitely. Yeah, really, man. She's <laughs> yeah. ferry, right? You got it for every occasion, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He got some girls, girls' bikes. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The, the oh, that's like thing, a stretch, stretched one. Huh? <laughs> yeah, he he got like his signature bike is the wave. Like the way frame, but he's navigating through all, all different styles and designs, right? This one is completely different from anyone else he got in his profile. Well, this one, I, I if you go back to that one again, go back to the woman's one. Now, this reminds me, and I know a lot of custom guys will agree with me. This this looks like the the rough uh, the rough rough woman's frame, right? And it looks longer, and 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 it looks like it's you know. The rough one was quite small, really small. So it looks like I'm not saying that they copied or anything, but they they did made it a little bit bigger. And, you know, the lines are, are are quite classic. So I'm not calling anybody any, but this one looks a little bit like a stretch version of that rough uh, that was going out a women's frame. You know, beautiful, beautiful. And then, it is. You know, they made it like I think it better because they 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 lengthened it a little bit. I mean, this is one of the classic ones, that wave one. I I, I think that one is like the most popular one. Yeah, that, that one. one, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then the new one, it, it's even a little bit more exaggerated. So uh, I think it was that like that green one he's holding. That was like the... The new one. Yeah, the new one. It's so really long, this bike. Indeed, it's like two chains there yeah. for sure. Yeah, let's look at it. That's the woman. Look how long it is, right? Yeah. It's like a stretch woman's bike, right? And normally, like the Bassmans, they're not stretch. You know, they're kind of a little bit more mid-size stretch. You know, these yeah, are like the, just super long. Look at that! Like, Ra I like is, how. Yeah, yeah. yeah Rainko is saying the name of the rough bike is Lady Tango. That's right. That's right. The Lady Tango. Yeah, that's. Oh, right. that's I was going to say the Tango, but it didn't sound right. <laughs> <laughs> <Beautiful>. <laughs> Lady Tango, yeah, that's right. Lady Tango. Oh, he's building castles as well. I like that. Oh, <laughs> so yeah. It's really cool, that one. yeah. Oh, that's the classic. All oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. These are these are just all sweet little designs. So, anyways, he assures us that it's not going out. They're gonna still produce these things. They've got a US dealer. I think his name is Dan Danny Ferranda. So if he's out there, he's your man in the US. If you guys are out there trying to look for some. He's your man out there for, for selling the, these TSPs. This is not an advertisement or, or anything. You know, we're not getting paid by these guys. We just think these guys got some, they built some really cool ass bikes. Yeah. And yeah, and we just wanted to feature them and show off their work. But like, hey, everybody's got these guys buy from them, man, so they can keep making cool ass shit, man. <laughs> Look at that, man. It's That's like crazy. Huh? <laughs> yeah, it does. The fat tanks on there and the saddlebags. Yeah, I mean, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, stuff, yeah. Can you talk a bit about our guest? Yeah, all right. So, yeah, this is the the moment we've been all waiting for, and we need to bring this guy out as soon as possible. I don't think I need to make any big introduction because we all know who this guy is. He's the like grandfather of of the chopper bike movement, and there he is. And when you put that that that. Uh, fork on his shoulder you know what we're going to be talking about you know and this is the most well-known guy to be talking about this subject so whenever you're ready i think you gotta roll it man all right There he is. Ah, uh, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> that's the fork in the pitcher, and that pitcher that you just, yeah, this is it. The fork that you just had in the pitcher. Um, this fork I made about, uh, I think it was fifteen. Oh God, at least fifteen years ago. So we'll we'll show that in a minute. How's everything going? Uh, Good man. Thanks for joining us once again. Well, it's uh, it's my pleasure. I think the last time I was on, I was suffering from a slight concussion. 
So if, <laughs> if I seem to be a little bit scattered back then, that's the reason. But uh, I feel, I'm feeling pretty good today. No more physiotherapy. Everything's beautiful. No, actually, it was it was great, and it is still one of the the most viewed show we had so we have so far. So it was perfect, man. Nothing to. Well, that's cool. That's very good. News. That's very good news. It's and hot. We're all here. It must be hot as hell around the world, but uh, you know we're surviving. Yeah, yeah. Hey, John. You know we all. You know we we could chat for hours. I think we even had an hour chat before this like chat, and we, me and John, we could talk about stuff. You know, on and off topic. We could do bikes because it's a long history on both of our sides, and we talk about other subjects. But we can go on forever. But like when it comes to custom bikes, there's like one subject that like everybody sort of puts. I mean, I have my personal story to it. BK, which we just learned, has his personal story to how he found the connection to you. And, you know, exactly. you're my connection to you as well. You know, seeing you for the first time. And this is probably when you originally came out with the article uh, back, I don't know, what was it, 2005? I don't know, 2000, whatever. No, no, it was, no, I think it was around 2004, actually. That's right. So that's when I remember reading about you in the BK uh, Bike Rod and Custom and you came out with this uh, amazing article while we're all like just feeding, trying to find any information. This guy wrote this whole amazing article about how to build your own Springer fork. Now, did, right? you ever, did you ever hear the story about why I actually came out with that article? Oh, we'd love to hear that. All right. Well, <laughs> I probably have, but go for it. <laughs> back in about 2003, 2004, um, I was on uh, – uh, you know, some of the forums back then, the custom bike forums in their very early days. And uh, when I figured out how to, you know, uh, work the internet a bit, um, I started posting some of the old photographs of the bikes I had made back 10, 20, 30 years, even before that. And uh, one of the things that uh, I got a lot of interest in was my early Springer projects. And all of a sudden, after I started... Uh, posting some of the old photographs of the Springers that I made, I was inundated, absolutely inundated with people um, asking me how, if I could make them one, how much. Uh, they're begging me to make them uh, a Springer fork for their project. And uh, I had to write back and tell each one of them that uh, uh, I just didn't have the means or the time or anything to do something like that. So, um, but I figured that the next best thing was to show people that they could make one at home and they could make it without too much, uh, you know, brutal effort. And so uh, through Bike Rod and Custom, which uh, so, some of the old some of the old people, some of the old guys who have been around in the uh, custom bike scene for a while, there used to be a, a web zine that dated back to about uh, 1998, and that was called Bike Rod and Custom, and it was... Uh, uh, founded by a guy named Jim Wilson in New York, who was a, uh, a set designer for uh, TV shows. He actually did all the uh, uh, Mr. Bill sets, and he created all those characters for, uh, I believe it was Saturday Night Live, right? Anyways, uh, I told him that what I wanted to do was to put together a do-it-yourself article so that when people uh, kind of uh, who wanted to build a Springer Fork and I couldn't build it for them. I wanted to show them ex like how they could build one at home without too much effort. And so uh, over, I think, uh, I worked it out to a, about a over about a week. And uh, I and I got my camera out and uh, I photographed myself putting together a Springer from scratch. And that turned out to be this, which is the uh, bike rod and custom. Uh, do-it-yourself Springer article, which is still available, which uh, we'll figure out a way to post that uh, at some time, maybe on one of the sites. But uh, um, after I published the article, the number of people who uh, were writing to me, asking me to make them uh, a Springer, uh, went down immensely. And from that point in time, I started to get uh, emails from people all over the world asking me about uh, advice for certain things or how how they could do it uh, in their situation in, in countries all over the world. So uh, it proved to be quite a popular article, and it uh, 
it got me out of hot water for not being able to make people springers. And so it's, it's, it's always much better if you can do it yourself. And uh, I believe that. So it was, the article was something, it was very basic and it was something that people could build on to make one for themselves. And so that was the story about that. How's that? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But, and that's but story, in history, history, history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that seems and, like yesterday. Exactly. And with that story in 2013, I found your your internet polls and things like that, and I decided to build my first hmm? custom fork following your tips. And that was the first time the uh, 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 first time I saw you, the first time I got you on my radar. And it was awesome. I tried to go step by step. And I can even show something here. Let me try to share. It's amazing uh, what he did. Wow. Inspired by John Brain's article, huh? Look at this. It's BK. Yeah, and I came, yeah, I came up with this project. It's, it's not exactly as strong and rope. I don't I don't know, like powerful the one you built, but that was my idea. And it did work. Inspired by you. And <laughs> that's that's how it well, that's very, yeah, very cool. Yeah. And, and then to me, let me let me get the, the but back back when my Springer article originally came out, there were no aftermarket Springers available. You it it that stuff was still to come later on, and uh, you know people were interested in the look and wanting something like that, but they just weren't available. So I decided to show them how they could make one at home. Hey, hey, hey BK, were, what were right? those clamps made out of? Those clamps. Uh, did you have a machine cut or, or uh, aluminum? Yeah, I see and see then those, right? No, no. Yeah, the clamps. Yeah, no, no, the clamps. Yeah, the clamps with those girders, everything. Like you had like oh. all those things. Um, did you get them like all outdoors uh, outsourced? Like so, you know, when no. John Brain talked about your design, did you get like plain well, like tubing you... bent and things like that? We 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 be, uh, we did it in our workshop. A friend of mine bent the. Did this pipe this pipe here to make yeah, the yeah. perfect angle? He's building motorcycle and he helped me. And all the rest I use from a, a, a normal bicycle front sh uh, sh suspension, like the the Springer's, uh, all from an old motorcycle uh, bicycle suspension. So it was really easy to do in the end. A part of this small pieces here and in the those here. I, I don't know the proper name. I don't remember. But it's it's the, always good to see when people. Take it upon themselves to, you know, try it, you know, take it in their own hands and try to make it their own. And that's a, a very good example. Very good. Yeah, it, it works. And thanks to you. And that that's when I said, oh, my God, this guy knows what he's doing. I have a lot to learn. And man, at that time, you are like untouchable. It was too far. And now we, we are really happy to have you in the show. And really. And, and that's right, man. Have, yeah. and, and if our friends here have any question. For to, to for John, just let, just type in the chat, and uh, we're gonna bring it in. If you have any question, just let us hey, know, and we'll free. be here. Hey, That's all. BK, cool. yeah. what, what do you think if we talk about some of the the like just to get the the warm up with um, some of the the bikes that we came across? The guys, it's sort of you know, there's some of the um, fork right. designs. Uh, let me get and it here. We can, we can go through it a little bit. And we could talk a little bit about forks and how really a lot of those forks seem to be influenced by John Brain too. <laughs> I'm sure it that, is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of them there. <laughs> yes, let me get it here. I got a bit confused First, now because well, I'm receiving. Okay, go ahead. I was going to say, luck luckily right now, um, we're back into a situation where there's a few custom fabricators that are, you know, supplying people with forks who really, you know, who probably are in a situation they can't build them themselves. But we have a few people out there right now who are uh, supplying good examples of their own. And uh, it's nice to see that that's available. We used to have a uh, an outlet called Choppers US or uh, uh, Cycles US down in California that... Uh, offered a Springer fork setup, and 3G used to have uh, a, a, a Springer fork setup, and uh, Nerve used to have its uh, Metropolis Springer for uh, quite a while that people put on us um, their their bikes. But uh, as time as time goes on, uh, they kind of they've kind of faded, and uh, we're not sure exactly where they're all at right now. But uh, it's always like I said, it's always good if. Uh, 
if you have the gumption to make one yourself, to try that, you know, uh, yourself to see if you can do it. And uh, it's it's great to see that a lot of a lot of the people that have submitted. Oh yeah, that's the uh, AV one, right? That's AV. Uh, yeah. A lot a lot of the people yeah. are are making their own forks, uh, and <laughs> that's really really cool. That's without a bolt. That's without the spring uh, bolt. All right. <laughs> before before we go any further, I just want to share some pictures we got from the TSP bikes. Um, oh yeah, oh, that's, so a, yeah, that's the viewers. newer one. That's the yeah. newer one. This is L Elberry. Yeah. So let me get the, the pictures back. I just received on Facebook. Oh yeah, that's sweet. That's like in the newest TSP frame. That that he's I like watching, that one. Yeah, he's watching the show and he just shared it. it seems to be the number one. Oh wow, zero uh, zero one. Oh wow, yeah, because those those are just new, huh? They just came out, I think, in the last year. I remember being in Vegas when uh, they they had some a couple of new ones there. So yeah, it's cool. He just sent sent me these pictures. Oh yeah, yeah that's uh, one of the guys there. Yeah. Yeah, he's watching the show and he sent on uh, Facebook. Oh yeah, one one on the work table. Cool. Oh yeah, one of the low racers. Yeah, that that's that low racer thing is cute. That's him. <laughs> Got <to> his big <laughs> picture. All right, so let's go back to our forks. Ah, and we got a question. Renko. Yeah, Renko. Yeah. Yeah. Can, just get the question. I will get the pictures, please. Uh, Hey, it says, Don, did you draw your forks before you yep. built you built it, or just out of the out of the blue? Uh, I never do anything out of the blue, and every time I come up with a fork design, um, I actually draw it out as and so I have a blueprint of how to of what I want and how to make it. What I what I go for is the uh, over over uh, distance between the axle nuts on the front wheel and that kind of gives me a guide as to how uh far apart the the forks need to be in order for it you know to work well and to look well with a particular uh type of uh, uh standard wheel or or a fat bike wheel and uh, uh bk may have a couple of pictures of uh uh drawings or designs i've done maybe that he might be able to bring that up in a little while but um, I do uh, uh, work everything out on paper. There's, there's one. Now, what, what you're seeing there is my cross-section of the girder fork that eventually went on to my uh, copper bike, the Diamante. I had to, and uh, girders, I found out, are very temperamental. You have to have everything exactly right. If, if one thing is not right, then you're going to have another thing on the girder that isn't right. And it took a lot of work and a lot of uh, uh, design work uh, on illustration board is what I do it on. And that's an example of the kind of drawing, extent of drawing that I will do to get, to make sure that everything is perfectly correct when, uh, when I'm making something. Hey, I just wanted to make a shout out to Bobby. Uh, he's he's finally made it to our show, huh? Bobby from uh, Chitao, no, Chicago. How you doing, hey, Bobby? What's up, Bobby? <laughs> Love you, Bobby. Everything's cool, man. <laughs> now, yeah, anyway, oh, what's up, Mac? Here. Uh, what's up, Mac Carter? Good to see you. Hey, what's Bobby. up, Rico? Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing the props out. <laughs> DK forty two says hello. <laughs> yeah, I'm saying hello. That's cool. Now uh, I I've been into forks a very very long time, and uh, the the forks that you see on the bike right here, um, I put together, or it started off as a Schwinn crate fork, and I I had my show bike together as a stock length uh, forked bike originally. But back in the mid-1970s, when we were showing our custom bikes at car shows, um, the thing that you wanted to do was to have a chopper fork. So um, on, let's see, uh, I managed to get permission to go and use a, uh, a junior high uh, shop class forge. And so I used that to bend up and to flatten... Uh, the, the metal to make the forks that you see right there. And then I had them chrome plated. 
And uh, I think the chrome plating on those forks back in 1975, 1976, I think it was a, it came to a grand total of about $80. So, and you know how much they would go for now. But um, yeah. chopper, chopper forks have always been one of my, you know, something that I've uh, been keenly interested in. So anybody my age, you know, who has seen uh, Easy Rider is, you know, was captivated by the chopper look. And so when we got into making custom bikes and things, I had to have a chopper fork. And so what you see is an extended Schwinn spring fork unit. And uh, I made that in a junior high shop class forge back in about 1975. Damn. I think you got some 20 inch fans on here too, just leaving you some comments, huh? There there's <laughs> there's my show bike at a show in 1978, I believe. So that's a that's a little while ago. At custom, you guys, like in 1970. This is the 80s one, right? Your 80s that's, one? Uh that's uh let's see, that's late 1980s and uh back I, I call the nineteen eighties the the dark ages. Because uh, custom custom biking in general, not only bicycles but in motorcycles, kind of just you know took a dive. There there just didn't seem to be too much interest, and uh, all the chopper magazines went defunct, and so there were only a few diehards like crazy people like myself who continued to make uh, custom bicycles at that point. And uh, one of the big problems of making a custom bike back in the 1980s was obtaining slick rear tires and uh, making a fork, you know, the, the Springer fork on that bike. Um, I, I knew someone or I st and I still know somebody who has a tool and die shop. And what I can do is I, uh, when I need to make something and uh, I can use their facilities and their big uh, uh, vertical bandsaw and cut out anything that I need on their, on their equipment. So, um, but nice to have friends. Yeah, well, it's not very nice to have friends. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's. Uh, um, but even even if I didn't have you know them to go to, I still could have uh, located and uh, accessed uh, small fabricator welder people who uh, who have that kind of equipment, and it wouldn't have cost too much to give them a design. If so, people out there, if if you have a design that you want done. There are small time uh, fabricator welder shops that can do your work that you need to get done if you wanted to make a Springer and uh, it wouldn't cost too much and you could and you could do it. So uh, and I that's what I would recommend highly. Uh, now, um, that's a picture of me cutting out a wide Springer uh, uh, triple tree plates uh, on the big vertical bandsaw out of quarter inch plate steel. So that's, yeah. What you see there is that is a laser cut uh, Springer plate set or kit that I originally uh, designed and had a number of uh, multiples made probably at least 12, 13, 14 years ago. And I still have a few of these sets left that I keep around for when I need an if, if I want to make a fork or I'm making a bike, then I like to have the stuff around so that I can just go, all right, I'm going to go, I'm going to make it, I'm going to do it. And uh, so this makes it easy. I could just as easily go the first, the original Springer fork plates like this, I made on the bandsaw. And it, if you wanted to make something like this, or you could have something made by a small uh, fabrication welding shop and they, they could do the basic uh, uh, cutouts for and drill the big holes and cut out the plates that you need. So if you need to do that, feel I mean just go for it. You know, not everybody has uh, access, you know, uh, to the kind of you know uh, tools or or big machine shop tools to do that kind of stuff. But there are uh, services available at a very reasonable price. You just have to search them out. And that's my recommendation. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Hey, I just want to make a little shout out to to the Pedals Up podcast guys. They're just they're on right now. Hey, Tony's just leaving, and Danny's son and Tony are here just saying hello. I think they said they're on the road. So what's up, guys? How you I'm doing? Glad you guys checked in. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now that that picture there is the girder fork that I made for my uh, copper plated bike I call the Diamante. And uh, what this is the first girder that I made. Um, I've always I under I've always understood how girders function, but it wasn't until I got into the actual design work of trying to put one of these together that I figured out what a what a challenge it really was to make a girder fork because everything on a girder fork is built around the eye to eye distance on the shock kind of like uh, I don't know if you can see that this is uh, very similar to uh, uh, right there everything on a girder fork all the specifications are built on the eye to eye distance on the shock whether so you can have long shocks up oh, there we go and what I like about these these I don't particularly like the length because on a bicycle the uh, the length on this is I think about uh, 190 millimeters which is a, a fair distance but um, what I like and what I've been searching out is uh, barrel springs, which is kind of a classic look on uh, girder forks. And one of the things that I found, uh, I, th I thought to myself, where the hell are you going to find a barrel spring, you know, that you can put onto a shock? They just they just don't exist. Right. So I thought, oh. and then when when you have that in your mind, you you. You keep your eyes open all the time. And one day, um, in my search for stuff, I found one of these. And, whoops, let's see. And what this is, is the barrel spring that fits under the seat of a classic Indian motorcycle. And what's great about it is that you can cut them down, you can modify it, and you can put them onto like a fox shock. And that's what went on to my, uh, my uh, copper bike's uh, girder. Is it was a Fox shock with a, an Indian motorcycle seat spring, a barrel seat spring. And because I wanted to get that classic look, I just, you know, I, I, I was kind of, uh, uh, you know, preoccupied with having a very, very specific look. And that's what I came up with. So, um, mind you. I should go get one, but uh, I just uh, I just ordered some uh, shocks from uh, China actually because I couldn't get them here, and I should go grab one in a minute to show you. But um, um, to build, I like I said, I, I found that when I went to build a girder, it was a it was probably the biggest cha design challenge that I'd ever encountered in my life. But that's the one thing that I did dis, uh, figure out is that everything on a girder is built around that eye-to-eye -eye length on the shock. You can have adjustments made with the shock mounts, you know. But to keep it good looking, you don't want to have a three, you know, a three-inch mount. You want to, you want to have, you want to have everything pretty tight. And I think uh, I think I accomplished that fairly well on that particular fork. And uh, come to think of it. I have I have something right here that you'll probably be interested in seeing, and this is the latest girder that I made, and uh, if you can see that, and you can see all around there. Well, that's cool. cool linkage. Just, Look at that. That's cool. cool. That looks cool. <laughs> yeah, and uh, oh, yeah. so this. Uh, this is my latest girder project and the one that I just uh, put together uh, within the last year, actually. But uh, if, if you give me a minute, I will show you how it functions. And because it's standing straight up here, you don't get to see this too often, but can everybody see that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, man, there's, that, so, there's a lot of range in that, huh? Well, it, uh, there is, actually. And uh, one thing I wanted to point out is, um, whoops, let's see here. The links, you see this link here and the link down here, they're parallel with each other. And uh, that is supposed to be, that's the ideal setup is to have the two links parallel to each other. And oh, yeah. um, the, uh, let's see here. 
the, it looks like an adapted I, I, ringer, I'm, doesn't it? I'm looking in a mirror image, you know, like in the on the screen. But the top tube here, if you can see, the top tube, like there, right? This top tube here is also parallel with the steer tube back here. And uh, so we're trying to work in parallels and to keep everything parallel. Now, you, um, if you, you look at the girders on this girder, right? This is a long chopper girder. On a regular, on a regular girder, you wouldn't have the links in such a down position, but you would have them more like that, right? Would that be but, at rest? No, that wouldn't be at well, rest. Well, but be, uh, not, but the reason that the links here up top and bottom are at such an angle going down is because oh yeah oh, when you yeah. when you get the bike on, oh, a, yeah. on a when you get the bike on a frame that has a fair amount of rake to it then ideally you want the the links to be more parallel with the ground right it's uh oh, right. you know it, it's okay that they're up a little bit but uh you don't, uh, you know, if that makes any sense, it, it's a little, it's a little hard to show here, but yeah. you can see, say this is the, this is the fork that is mounted onto the bike, which has a big rake. And now the, uh, the links that are used to actuate the fork legs are kind of parallel with the ground. When it's standing straight up here, it looks like they're, you know, <coughs> way down like that. Right. But it makes a lot of sense now you, you threw the rake in <laughs> so yeah but uh so that's uh that was my latest project there's some good things about it some some things that are not so good it's it's fairly heavy i'm one of those people like uh sick nick in new york who tends to overbuild things just to just to make sure that they're extremely strong right so so that's uh that's kind of the way it is. Uh, it's a little, it's a little hard to see, but. Uh, what's the length on it? Just to give us an idea. Oh, let's have a look. Um, okay. I would say that this is about. Uh, oh God, good question. About fifty inches to the top here. Yeah, I was gonna say like four feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, about that. About that. And the. Uh, and the ends are. The distance, the distance in between the fork legs matches the uh, a standard width axle. All right, so nothing fat, right? But you Not can make it fat, right? You could, uh, you could figure out how to put some fat wheels in there, right? Um, that uh, possibly I, I I haven't explored that yet, but uh, um, I have a whole bunch of uh, fat front. Uh, uh, hubs and things that I'm going to experiment with. So the uh, uh, back to Springer's for a moment. You're talking about fat bikes. Um, this is <laughs> this is the Some top. Rises. Yeah, this is the 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 top triple tree uh, plate off of a uh, off of a wide Springer that I'm putting together and. Uh, the, oh wow! And this this is uh, set up to allow up to uh, five inches in between the fork legs, which will be perfect uh, for a four and a, uh, a four and a quarter wide tire. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's so, all right. That's yeah. all right. <laughs> got well, some well, options. I was going to say one one of the things, like even even back the the first the first Springer, the first classic chopper like Springer that I ever made, uh, I made back in 1976. I, it's really aging me, right? I made that back in 1976. Uh, I was three. I was three. You were, <laughs> I, yeah, well, I, I made the Springer when you were three years old, so that tells you how old I am, yeah. right? But um, the big problem of building a Springer back then and even now, if you're building a Springer at home, is what choice of springs am I going to use for this Springer I'm making? And because, you know, you, you go out to uh, cost, not Costco, but uh, you go out to Lowe's or something and you go, yeah, the, you know, this, you know, it, there's a spring here, but that's to keep the, the front door, you know, like it's 
you know, it's an expansion spring and it keeps the front door closed. But um, uh, over time, I've discovered uh, because I'm into I'm into springers and I'm always on the lookout for the ideal stuff to have around that will allow me to make a springer on the spot. And uh, <clears throat> so over t uh, the do it yourself article, I have listed um, the main bottom spring as a uh, a porch swing spring. And that's what they're called. So if, if you go into Lowe's or something, and they have them now, they didn't have them back then, um, you've all seen those hanging porch swings. Porch swings. It's hard to say. But um, those, those are hung uh, on each side by a, by a spring that uh, is about one and three quarters diameter and about five inches long. And I discovered that uh, the, the strength of those was absolutely perfect for a springer for a bicycle. And so those were the main bottom uh, springs. Uh, lately, in the, in the last year or so, I discovered uh, a company on eBay that was selling uh, another good set of springs, which are, which are these springs, which are chrome-plated, and they're about uh, one and three quarter diameter, and they're about five and a half inches long. And uh, this this little thing here is an engine frost plug, and that is oh, yeah. and that is what is used as the spring retainer. So now, oh, clever, clever. Now, yeah, and now as you know, on uh, say a classic Harley Springer, the top spring you have your two. You have your two big main bottom springs, right? But at the top, you have what is called the rebound springs. And those are smaller, shorter, and uh, not as big a diameter. And so um, initially, when uh, <clears throat> I'm starting to lose my voice a bit. we <laughs> Mike, Mike and I talked too long earlier, so I'm starting <laughs> to lose my voice a bit. But... Um, when I originally went looking for the cor a correct spring that would give me the, the the right strength and the right visual ratio with the big bottom spring, um, I went to like I think it was a TSC store, and and I was looking around, and then I noticed they were riding mowers. They had like uh, an an MTD riding mower, and I looked underneath the seat, and underneath the seat they had these beautiful three inch long, inch and a quarter wide uh, seat springs. And I thought, this is perfect. This is what I'm going to use for my the top springs of, uh, uh, of, my, of my springer, for the do-it-yourself springer. And here they are right here. So what oh, you, yeah. So what you see... Is that, is that it? That, uh, this, is that your do-it-yourself this, springer? This, <laughs> this is the original... Uh, do-it-yourself Springer that is in that article that uh, oh, I posted man. Back, uh, 15, 16 years ago. It's been in constant use and has never had a problem. But you can see that uh, uh, the springs very much keep the same ratio as the classic uh, Springer forks from the very old days of uh, motorcycling. And so uh, I kind of prefer that look myself, and it's it's very much the same as the custom Springer forks that were uh, made for motorcycles back in the early 1970s as well. And uh, I can't, it's a little, it's a little hard to, to show you how they work, but uh, yeah, I, I can't, I can't show you how it works, but uh, it's just too low. But um, that is basically it. The top springs on this are the, uh, the under seat springs from an MTD mower and the big bottom springs on uh, this are porch swing springs. Say that twice or say that three times really fast. Porch swing springs. And you can find those at the TSC store. I mean, uh, you can find those at places like Lowe's and the big hardware uh, section in the spring section for the, uh, for the swing springs. And, uh, um, 
the little top springs here are still available on places like eBay if you if you search them out. But um, lately, or a substitute for that just kind of fell into my, you know, uh, on the old Harleys and on some of the other old springers from the early days, they had, the, you know, the top springs weren't the same diameter all the way up. At the top, they're kind of tapered in. And I thought to myself, boy, wouldn't it be great if I could find uh, a spring that was fat at the bottom and eventually had a taper at the top? And I thought, where, you know, like because they don't sell springs like that. You know, they, you know, for, you know, they don't sell bicycle spring or top springs. They just don't. So you have to, yeah, I thought, okay, gonna, I'm going to keep this at the back of my mind. And if I see something that I think is going to work on this, and this, this is a John Brain secret about these springs. And, but I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm only going to tell you. All right. But um, I will show you what I came up with. And this, this is the new spring that I'm going to be using. And uh, I don't know if you can really see that, but it has a taper on the top. And what this is, this spring here, oop, what this is, and some as soon as I tell some people, they'll know instantly, this started off as a barbecue handle spring. Uh. <laughs> that I cut in half, and I ordered uh, the longest one that I could I could find, and I cut it down and I closed the ends on it, and then I had the top springs that matched the look of an old Harley, and they 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 have enough strength to get the job done, and once I get it chromed, it's going to be absolutely beautiful. So that's a secret. That's a secret. <laughs> All right. So anyway. hey, is that like the chipping hammers for like welding too, right? You got uh, those little very similar, but they're too small. They're oh. too small. Oh, um, I was just trying to think of another thing know, to look no, like. because I thought of that too at one time, <laughs> and I kind of explored that. And when I was at like uh, you know one of the places where they have those, I, I checked and I said, oh, unfortunately, that's too small, but that's the right idea, right? But then I found I found a source for like. Uh, I think it was eight inch long barbecue springs, barbecue handle springs with a half inch, uh, op a, a half inch center. So a half inch rod could slide in between. And I thought, oh, so there you go. So, I mean, and you know, this is the kind of thing you have to keep your eyes open. Um, if you want to make a springer, keep your eyes open for, you know, the right spring to use. And that's what I did over the years to the point now that I have a good understanding. Uh, I have a collection of them now, and I have a lot of the springs that, uh, so I don't need to go hunting for them anymore. But, you know, my advice is that if you want to make a springer at home, then probably uh, the best thing you can do is to use those uh, swing springs that are uh, about five inches long. They have, the, they have the right strength and they have the right diameter. And you can get... Uh, freeze plugs that will fit them perfectly so um and for the top springs on the springer you can either use uh the under seat springs from a mower which you could find at like a tsc store or you could hunt up you know <laughs> it's yeah doing everything in reverse here you could hunt up one of these uh barbecue handle springs and use that as the top spring, if you wanted to get that tapered, that classic tapered spring look. Oh, so that's, that's the way to go. <laughs> that's my, uh, yeah, that's the way to go, and that's the way I'm going to be going. I, yeah, so. That's sweet. Uh, that last so, one, I like that. So tapered. that's uh, that. That's sort of some it, some advice if you're interested in making a classic springer, because the springs are probably going to be the biggest problem you'll find if you didn't know where to look. Then you know it. it it's kind of mind boggling when I've. When I first made my, when I made my first Springer back in 1976, there were no porch swing springs. There was nothing. I had to I had to hop on the subway in Toronto, and go down to a spring company, after traveling about an hour, and uh, and I went begging to them asking for you know a spring, 
and I showed them what size and I showed them what I needed and and they came up with it. And I, I and uh, B came actually may have a photograph of that original blue chopper that I showed in 1976. So, oh, he may have that. It, uh, he's, probably, he's probably scrambling around. He's like, oh, he's my, he's scrambling around that. looking. For <laughs> he's like, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> but um, if, hey, if, anybody, if anybody has, can, I, comment, ask, yep, can I ask him? Can I ask you a couple of questions about your Springers? Because, like, I yes. think people are listening right now and yep. they're thinking, yeah, you know, he's giving us, he's, you're giving us some good pointers and things like this. But, like, where, where, like, the engineering, like, what, what, what things do you, can you give, like, the listeners, uh, like, what kind of um, advice that like you were giving me earlier on, something about the, the three holes? And that was a really cool idea. Like, That's, then uh, you could, yeah, that um, the um, I think what I was referring to when I when I referred to the three the three main uh, the holes on a girder on a girder fork, uh, which we can look. Oh, let's see. I don't know if we can see here. We have uh, you can you can see the the two nuts. Uh, there's sort of the uh, the triangulated. Uh, fork tube assembly, which is all welded up and is like one unit. And uh, I have to put my leg up here. Uh, <laughs> right? Let's see here. And uh, shit. So this this is one point. This is another point. And way down at the other end is the axle point. And uh, what I should have done was uh, that was assembled on a jig. And uh, so uh, sort of a, it was a, a flat plate of quarter inch steel with three holes drilled in that matched the three holes on the girder here. Uh, this, this hole, this hole, and uh, the axle hole. And uh, so what I did is during the assembly of the fork legs, um, the fork tubes and... The plates here that were uh, at are, that are at the end of the fork tubes welded on uh, were mounted onto the uh, the jig, and they they were the fork tubes are mounted on either side of the fork jig, and it was bolted together. And I made big big clamps to keep it together, so that uh, when it once it was welded that those three points would be exactly the same uh, and kind of a mirror image of each other on each of the sides of the fork tubes. And uh, that allows or that gives you perfect alignment. And you, so you look at the front wheel and the front wheel is absolutely straight. It's not going this way. It's not going that way. It's going straight. And that's what you need to do. So um, you need to make a jig. If you want to, if you want to make a triangulated uh, set of girder fork legs, then you're going to have to make a jig, and you're going to have to have those three holes, and you're going to have to clamp everything in, so that you know you can weld it, and then once it's welded, you take it apart, and these two sides match each other. When you put the front wheel on, it's straight, and that's how you do it. Yeah. Oh, so John. Yes. Thanks. Thanks for your lessons, <laughs> for this class, and we got some questions here. All right. Ferry Cornet is saying most people here are from Europe. Where can I find everything in centimeters? Well, that I guess we will have to cover. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, you know, like uh, of course. I mean, I, I'm I'm constantly going on the internet and converting uh, inches to centimeters all the time. So uh, I, I, I don't know exactly what the, uh, the tubing situation is, the steel tubing situation is in centimeters, but uh, you can, it, it's just a matter of when 2. you- 2.2 2. 2 centimeters per inch, right? I, I'm not sure, like uh, 19, uh, 19, 19, centim 19 millimeters is three quarters of an inch. But that's yeah, about yeah that, yeah that's right yeah uh, that's uh, that's about like that. the only that's about the only 
uh, uh, two dimensions that are going to be equal. But otherwise, I, I, I don't know. Uh, tw uh, I think one inch is like uh, twenty five point three three or something. I'm, I can't I can't really say. So maybe you know maybe they sell uh, you know like English yeah. inches. I don't. I, yeah, you you would have to tell me because I've never been to a metal a metal supply place <laughs> over in Europe. Well, we'll we'll we'll, yeah. we'll pass on that question. But like a. I think, what, I think what, it's, it's, actually, it's Europe, actually easy to answer because if, if I went to Europe, I would just build things to the specifications of the of the material that was available. It, it's no different. It's absolutely no different. Exactly. So right, yeah, and but, but, yeah. Before we we wrap up, uh, we got the pictures that John select from the. Oh, that's right. We did yeah, have a competition. Yeah. Well, a competition. It was a more of a show. No, it's not you guys. A competition, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let's not. It was just. And then John Brain. We asked John Brain to pick like five of his favorites, and we'd we'd like show off. And it doesn't mean like the top, or it's just John Brain five just, favorites. You know, I, I have I have a wide variety of interest in the kind of forks. Now, what what interests interests me in the fork that we see here is that it looks very much like a very famous custom motorcycle fork called a uh, a Harman uh, girder and uh, it's you know and I just thought that is a really classy looking little piece on on the young girl's bike that's Paul Wachowski's bike Wacko yes, garage. garage yes that's Wacko right garage Wacko. I think he's in Japan now if, if he's on there what's up Wacko <laughs> uh, now he now here is something this um, just to show you that high quality um, high quality components can be made wherever you live in the world. And um, this, this is a hell of a good looking Springer fork. And this comes from Indonesia where, you know, oh, it, it's not, it, 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 and Indonesia is not always a, an easy place to, uh, to find the services that you need, but, but there you have it. No matter where you live in the world, if you want to make a custom Springer fork, you can do it. And here's read, the read John Brain's article first. <laughs> <laughs> I, I now I thought this was just uh astounding. Uh you know, in, 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 in Look itself. at that. What is that? A dead person on the front of that? It's, what it's is a, that? It, it looks like a skull at the top, and it looks like the uh it looks like the barrel spring underneath it looks like the rib cage. Oh, I see. That, oh, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's cool. Kind of, I got that's it. That's kind yeah. of what it looks like to me, and I thought that was pretty cool. Never seen anything like that before. I thought it was a leaf spring behind it, but I can't really tell the detail on it. It could be. It could be. It could be, yes. It could be. Because it's quite separated. Oh, yeah, look at that. We all know that one. Huh? Now, I, now, this this was built by a, a guy named Eric Hainan in, uh, in Quebec in Canada. And uh, this, you know, this this goes to show you, you know, what builders out there, are, you know, are, are capable of this. You know, wh when I saw this, I thought, man, that is some high quality work. Somebody really, you know, he really put some amazing effort into building that fork. It's so, pro work, pro work. Very, 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 impressive, in. very impressive. Incredible bike. Now, just uh, the way that the fork on this is part of the overall sculptural element of the bike is, oh, is really, man. Turn, really turned me on. I, oh, was, I was really impressed by the way everything flows together as uh, a, 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 a united uh, design element. So that is really something else. I mean, there's so many. There was so, every, every one of the bikes that got you know, that, that people submitted were just incredible. So like, uh, you know, I, I just chose some of the diverse elements that I thought were uh, kind of unique. And this is a very unique. Look, look at it. You go back to that. You look at the, how the front fork looks like it's a opposite of a rear yes. dropout. Yeah. Right. Yes. It looks like there's a reverse dropout, right? It looks like there's a dropout yep. going on to the front. That's yep. really unique. Huh? I like that. That's got, Crazy, <laughs> yeah, I like that very much. It's from Raffo. I'm not sure who sent this one. 
Yeah, we, we need to thank everyone who sent the picture because they are, look, I cannot even open all of them because there are hundreds. The, I'm the, just... the, the work is just incredible. What what everybody is coming up with now is is just a mind blower. I mean, uh, uh, Kevin Hewitt, Kevin the, Hewitt is pretty awesome. We covered it last week. Remember uh, BK? Wow. Yeah. Just, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Hewitt. Uh, it's also it's impressive. Nice you know, it's, 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 it's hard to pick out Look at Kenobi's. Look at Kenobi's. So cool. Look at this one, man. This yeah. this one's got a unique one, right? Yep. And it looks like it looks like a handle fork too, right? Is it a handle fork? Yeah, that's so true. many, man. That's oh, this is cool. Adam. They're Adam's an Alwyn. Yeah. They all that right. it's, it, they're fantastic. Sick. That's sick. Yeah, I cannot load all of them. No, we got the new one from Antonio. Oh, yeah. This Antonio. is from uh, yeah, um, Rudello, right? And, and yeah. Antonio Rudello. Yeah, and he just came Star out Wolf. with that. That was pretty sick. Yeah, great. Classic. Look at that. Look at that. It's very hard to put together a girder. So wh whenever I see a girder, I think, you know, that's that's really something. You see this one, John? Yes. This one's uh, yes, on yes. air ride. It's yes, air yes. ride. I, I, I think that's one of the ones that I... Uh, yeah, you did. I, yeah, yeah. I, I put that one forward as one of the... Oh, yeah. Of oh, yeah, that's right. That's one of your picks. Oh, yeah. So there you go, Antonio. Get another pick from John Brain. You know, don't go anywhere, Antonio. He says he wants yeah. to leave for all. You stay here, Antonio. <laughs> I, I've got a, I've got a good eye for, uh, for uh, interesting stuff. So. Yeah, just, you do. I want to. I, I, I oh, wanna... that's a great one. Look at that one. Oh, look all those <laughs> likes on that one. Jesus. I want, I want to thank everybody for uh, submitting all those great photos because, to me, it's all very inspirational and. Uh, it, it it makes me feel fantastic that so much great work is is being done these days, just beautiful. Exactly, wow. I, I will keep it scrolling down, and it's endless. It's, and the creativity is also endless, man. It's guys, you rock, man. <laughs> I'm gonna make a vid with all of these forks. I swear. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I think this is the yeah. only way to do it justice because everybody yeah. put it. Thanks this everybody one. for putting the effort, putting your forks out. There's so badass forks in there. I mean, if you need inspiration to do forks, just like whatever this video comes up by BK is going to be inspirational. Because yeah. look at those forks you got in there. Like everything's oh, in there. Yeah, the, 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 uh, this, the, that fork by, by, by Timo Van Donegan. That's, uh, he does some incredible work. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, I, that's, I know that. I mean, uh, it's just, yeah. it's, you know, this, you could have a, you could have a fork show. You know, it, it's just <laughs> well. well we're know. having a little. Well, I, I mean, like we're, the Spanish I mean, one. I, I mean, a, like... a live fork show. Come and see the forks. You know, <laughs> just incredible, beautiful stuff. My God. Oh, I like that one too. <laughs> yeah, not so much. <laughs> no, this looks. looks that was a cool. I I, I cut out forks. my own um, triple trees as well, huh? We, we we you know you get out there and if you're talking about mm -hmm. making forks. I mean, I cut out my triple trees, found the holes, and set it up. I even made it like, yeah, you could see it right there. So we, I made those triple trees on there, bent the, the front yep. forks before anybody was bending them. That's 2006, right? And that's all co completely custom front end that we did. Actually, custom the whole bike. But, like, those are forks that we thought, like, I think it was following you, John Brain. It's like mm -hmm. you gave me the kind of confidence, not, not um, you know, to, like, make my own, uh, what do you call it, um, the plates. The, the... I'm, I'm, I am glad that you made them. That you know, because uh, it it gives greater satisfaction. You know, when when you can when you can do some of the things on a bike yourself. You know, it uh, like I said before, it's 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 like a problem that you conquer. It's like a quest, and it's uh, it's always good to conquer that. You know. That quest. You that gave you us. Think. You gave us that. You got you, your thing, and you're bright up. And maybe this is what more of us need to do, or whatever. Is that it, that was the inspiration that that you did it, and then you wrote it up, told us how it's done, and that. And all right, now we have YouTube videos and things like that. Now people are, are getting it. But like we're talking was, 15 years ago, right? No, that's right. And there wasn't YouTube videos was, going on, and you inspired nothing. a whole bunch of people there to was, to do there these. Was, yeah. There there was nothing back. There was nothing back then, but a need. And I recognized the need, and I and uh, I presented it in a way that virtually just about everybody could accomplish with oh, a little bit of work. 
Yeah, that's that. That's um, from Rob English. Yeah, that's uh, uh, that's that's very impressive. I love one of my favorite forks. I love this yep. uh, this look. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, this, this yeah, like, and it's, that uh, <laughs> Oh, that go. Do you see that green one? Go back up again. I want to show you about that green one. Yeah, those yeah. two pictures. You'll see yeah, that. this is yeah. insane. So it's in polycarbonate. I don't know if you guys could see it, but those are plastic, right? And he's got it lit up oh. right now. So those that's are uh, polycarbonate tubes, and he put a light in it, and they glow up. So that's an interesting idea, too, you guys. Uh, no, polycarbonate. At, uh, yeah. At, at, at the Autorama many years ago, a guy came with a trike that had mag wheels made with uh, clear plastic spokes. Oh, clear plastic spokes. Oh, yeah, wow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Oh, that's so, kind of a uh, cool idea, too. I, 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 think they may, I think they may have even lit up. Look at this sick frame. Look at that. Yeah, that I mean, I mean, we, we've, we've known this one for, for years, but look how sick that one is. I think it's Nathan Shaw. I think if I remember him. Nathan Shaw, yeah. 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 Yep. That's right. That, that was sick. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Nathan, uh, Timo got it. Yeah, there you go. I got it before you, Timo. <laughs> I know you probably. I, 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 I a great one. <laughs> I, I checked out every single one of the photos that people submitted, and you know, just the the quality of the work, the uh, you know, the design, the experimental design, the you know, kind of thinking out of the box. It 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 is really reassuring to see. That's that, sweet. Look at that Springer with the yeah, like yeah. kind of artistic uh, flair that to it. Huh? Yeah, that, yeah that, that, that's pretty sick. Yeah, I, I I I forgot who that was. This was from Juan Chavez. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, Juan Chavez. Juan Chavez. Oh, yeah. this one is really interesting. It's like inverted handlebar. Oh, I like yeah, the orange. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wood bike. <laughs> <laughs> that's no, that's uh, that's uh, now, if if you look um, at where, you know. The fork mounts. Um, that's something that you don't normally see. I mean, that that is really something else. Very impressive. So yeah. it's like the motorcycle one that goes all the way through, right? Like yeah. you, you, kind of. you put, yeah, sort of like that, right? The axle goes through. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You guys, that, yeah, that yeah. joke wasn't didn't get it's old. It's, it's good that people have a sense of humor. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we like that. That's very nice. All right. Okay. Before we. We go. I got another uh, picture sent from TSP users. A lot. Oh a lot yeah. More right. To the, more of them. Oh, those those are the same. Wait a second. Yeah, yeah. I think plenty. I just wanted to say I oh, hope yeah. I uh, I hope I answered the questions people uh, put to me adequately. Yeah. If you if. Guys, you have any last question? I think we have like two minutes to, yeah, I, to talk about that. So, hey, John, I, I was just thinking, like, when people are gonna, they're gonna go away. They're gonna restudy this too. I'm, I'm telling you, John, they're gonna listen to your fork thing. I know people yeah. are still interested in making forks. What if, if people were to say to you, like, hey, John, like, what, what if you just like? I just want to make one of yours. Could you like give me a blueprint of your thing? Like, do you have a blueprint you like that you can like share uh, over the, the internet? Uh, or the, the only blueprint that I ever made, you know, for, you know, uh, like the templates. Do you have templates? Could we like? I, I have. The, I have. Uh, the only templates I have that were made for other people to use were the do-it-yourself. Uh, was was this fork right here? Yeah, that's right. So you have you so, have to do it in and, the article, uh, right? And what maybe what we'll do is uh, I will send uh, BK the link to the archived uh, article along with uh, some of the uh, 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 additional information that you need. And uh, people can access it that way. There's, you know, it's uh, if you want it, we'll provide it for you. No, no problem at all. Or if uh, you can always write me too on my uh, Facebook page. So uh, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah. So uh, feel free to ask, and it'll be made available for you. 
All right. It, it, it's only 50, 50 euros a minute, right? Is that right? 50 euros, 900 number. <laughs> <laughs> it's joking. I don't know. I, I, it's, I, only, I, it's only five, I think. <laughs> I, I, and I have one question. Um, have I ever built adjustable spring of forks? Um, I, I'm not quite sure what that means, but uh, when I build a, a set of forks, it's custom built to a very specific bike project and application. So that I have, uh, so depending on the rake and uh, which which is the angle the neck is at, I can I can dial in the design for a fork so that I have total control over the rake and trail, which is the element that gives you the best steering. It gives you the kind of steering to make, you know, to make the bike feel like it has power steering rather than massive flop, which, uh, which can happen if you don't make uh, the, the specifications on any kind of fork uh, correct. So um, when, when I come up with a, uh, a Springer design, I design everything in uh, the length. I design the the final rake and trail factors, and uh, all that kind of stuff, so that when it's on the bike, it functions perfectly and it sits perfectly. And so uh, adjustable. You would never find it a reason to adjust it, John. I mean, like the mountain bike guys do. You know, they they have adjustable even gas, and they have. Uh, the spring tension rate, they can adjust it through the screw, uh, like call over, you know, well, wouldn't those be, work pretty because, cool? Because, because, the, uh, because it's a street application, um, once you get it dialed in uh, for a basic street ride, then uh, you're in pretty good shape. Um, adjustable for ride, you can also lengthen the rockers. And uh, so this, here's, here's an example of a rocker. All right. Y you see? And uh, this hole down here, that doesn't move. Like, so what happens is like that. This, this is the axle hole up front here. And if, if, this, <laughs> if this axle hole were closer to here, you would have a stiffer ride. And if you had uh, the axle hole out even, out even is farther. Is there a calculation for it? How do you know? How far? How do you like? How do you know? Experimentation. Oh man, come on! I, 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 I don't. I, I just. I. That's that's sort of eyeball engineering, and uh, you know. I mean, can we like follow some math books? I mean, I know I was using my race car book when I was built building up my race cars, and there was like race car math, you know. Yeah, math. And I found yeah, there's spring race. Like but they have uh, spring race in there, and you can calculate depending on the angle and how much it comes out you could calculate spring rates yeah. if you're used to like and also trigonometry and all that you could actually if anybody's well, uh you to, know clever uh, with I, their maths I, I guess you could and i have made in the past i have made rockers with multiple axle holes so that you can dial in what kind of ride yeah are. exactly yeah so why not you, like you, one you of can, those yeah loads, so you, can, loads you can do that you know that's yeah, that sounds that's cool. Uh, that's that's been done before, and that that is a way that you can dial in your ride, and uh, that also adjusts its weight and angle, and you know angle yeah, of attack. Right. You know, yep. there's so many things that taken apart with the front suspension, and yeah. you you've run it your combination and like that, but like somebody has never ever done it before. I mean, no. it's like race cars. Race cars, when, you got like all the bracket and adjustableness yeah. that you can dial in your car. You wouldn't just like, well, we dialed it once. So, you know, just one hole in it and let's go. You know, there's, there's always constantly with the do it yourself, with, you know, with the do it yourself Springer article. It was <clears throat> that was designed so that you have a, uh, uh, you know, I don't know about a, a, a two and a half or three foot long Springer. You have that particular set of uh, springs as the spring rate. And then I gave the specifications on the rockers and where the, where the placement of the, of the hole should be, and so um, that's a that's a good setup. And if 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 uh, if people want to uh, make new rockers and have the axle hole at different lengths away from that main pivot hole, then that is uh, also a way that you uh, could have some adjustability 
for the ride and and for the rake that that also somewhat adjust the uh how your rake and trail is going to is going to act well, even the linkages the linkages those things they could actually have um adjustments as well right you know uh, well you could yeah it, it you would have to i mean could you not like pick it out more like you know they do on the other ones could you not like set it up so you could set up different rakes on it uh if, like, some of those linkages were a little bit longer i don't know I was well just... you, you you have to have you have to have Let's put it this way: If the if you have a rocker on the fork and it's set up like that, right? Then the the road uh, the road forces are going to go straight up. If you have it like that, then it's going to go like that, and the road forces are going to go into the springs. Oh, all right. So there's that, there's limits. There's limits. Then well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There there are limits, and if. if uh, if you if you have the axle hole very close to the main pivot hole on the rocker, then it's going to be a much stiffer ride, and you're not going to get as much uh, 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 length of movement in the rocker. So it's it's going to feel it's going to feel a lot stiffer. You put the axle hole out a lot farther, and uh, it can get pretty spongy actually. So it it can make a a hell of a difference. Yeah, I, I, I'm just going, just trying to get to for the viewers, and they want to get into building one of your forks, and maybe like I think some guy just said like make it out of cardboard, you know the the, the no, patterns no, that, that you want to. That's very good. That's very good. Yeah, make it out of it. I, I think Tommy just said it right now. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and and that's make right. your points out of there. He's he's yeah. just trying to you know bring it from the basics of say. Uh, some yep. bike builders, how would they would put it together? The points, like you said, John. Yeah. You know, you making cardboard. The the springs that you mentioned, like uh, the, those, the that's uh, a good starting point. Those those those, springs. those are all starting points. I'm just trying to bring like get everybody refresh you with all the yep. the stuff that John may, may, may mentioned about uh, what kind of springs you want to get and where from. Like the barbecue ones, remember that you guys. He says those are good barbecue ones. Remember you, that you, one. You got to find the so, right ones. We're giving or, you guys all our tests, so you got all that, well, all that information. You can all always, right. you can always press the rewind button to see. That's right. So, and then you get to the end, and you say, "All right, what did, what, you know, what are all the things?" <laughs> you just gotta, hey, John, I really, just, really appreciate you um, coming on. I'm sure you're, they're gonna, people are gonna be looking forward to seeing your next visit because, like, you just got too many master classes to go on, man. <laughs> I, I hope, I hope we were able to present some information that people will find useful and uh i get that's that's one of the main things that we want to do is to make you know is to make this work a little less uh challenge a little less challenging you know it, it doesn't have to be a brutal challenge that you know and i'm i'm hoping some of the information that we passed on today will help people overcome some of the hurdles that kind of come with making uh these kind of uh, forks and things so that's cool. oh, thank, thank you, man. Thank, thank thanks you. a lot, John, for, for telling us about it, right, I, BK? I, 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 hope I, you, uh, huh? I hope I didn't screw up the demonstrations too much. Absolutely not, man. Thanks you, a lot. You you want to see you want to see one of the first uh, first forks that uh, kind of got me uh, heavily into uh, interest? I'll show you. It's right here. It's right here. This. This. Oh, nice, nice this. one. Uh, it's like fork. an OG Springer, right? OG Springer, right? It is an OG Springer, but this is not only an OG Springer. This is the Springer that this is the Springer that came on the 1968 Schwinn crate that I was given as a boy. I oh still damn! It. So wow. uh, yeah, I still have it, and uh, damn. Uh, so wow, I've been in, I've been into it a little while. So I mean, this wow, is, man. It's gonna, that kind of so demonstrates. Some, some, some people might say hoarding, but I, I, we don't. We call it custom collection. <laughs> I, I have the, I have the frame off it too. I have the frame <laughs> off it too, but I don't have a lot of the other stuff. You've got a museum in there, BK. One day yeah. we need to like check this out. Open up the John Brain Museum. He's got so much stuff he's been holding for 30, 40 exactly. years. Exactly. <laughs> I, I have hey, a John, few things. I appreciate you guys museum. coming on. <laughs> okay. Thanks, you guys. Thank thanks you. for having me, and uh, thanks for giving me. 
the opportunity to kind of pass along some of the uh, the wisdom I've learned over the years, uh, and hopefully people can use some of that information, you know, to make their building, you know, uh, projects a little bit less tedious. So there you go. Uh, like I said, press the rewind button if, if there was something I said or uh, that you need clarification, you know, especially about those springs. Uh, they're available. You just got to hunt them up a little bit, but it's, it's not like starting from zero now. So you'll you'll have a you'll have a starting point that's a lot and then, higher. Than and you got a nine hundred number, right, BK? If anybody needs your help, right? Exactly, exactly. <laughs> All right, thanks, man. Thanks, Cheers, everybody. Man. Thank we'll, we'll check out Take some of you guys. Thank you very kindly. Okay, thank you. Next time, man. All right. Yeah. yeah. And and if you you guys want to keep up the conversation, the bike talk, every Thursday at uh, eight p.m. Nine, right? Eight, yeah, eight, 8 p.m. PM yeah, we have the pedals up going on, so just to keep up the bike talk. Yeah, they came on today too. Thanks, Danny and Tony, for showing up. They're keeping up the bike talk. So, like, I, I watch it up. I, I I get a little bit later, but I, it's sometime in the morning when I get to see their the rerun. But I, I'm keeping up watching them, these guys bike talk. Is that we, we need more? All right. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Have Cheers, a good man. Week. Uh, you too. Hey, board. thanks you guys for tuning in. See you guys Thank next you week, right? Bye, guys. Bye. Cheers. <laughs>